Hi there, and it's good to see you at the start of another week of Fuha Sports today as we catch up on the Wimbledon Championships with the competition moving into the last 16. And we will also bring you a roundup of some other sporting headlines. So let's start with Wimbledon. With round two and three ties having been completed over the weekend, the grass court event starts week two with the last 16. And along the way, there were dropouts. Most notably in the men's draw was fifth seed Robin Sodling. He lost his third round tie to 18-year-old Australian Bernard Tomic in straight sets of 1-6, 4-6 and 5-7. It's been a good start for Tomic this year, having been featured in the third round of the Australian Open and now a place in the last 16 at Wimbledon. And for this 18-year-old, his dream to play at Wimbledon was ignited by a fellow Australian almost 10 years ago. Yeah, my first Wimbledon match was against Pat Rafter and Sivanisovic in the final, where I uh, finished 9-7 uh, in the fifth, and uh, that was uh, a match that I really watched and loved, and you know, from that day I said I really want to play in Wimbledon one day. Good for him. Now he will face a Belgian in the fourth round. Well, more on that in a bit. But as for the hot favourites, Rafael Nadal defeated Luxembourg's Gilles Muller and the world at number one, who hasn't dropped a set yet in Wimbledon, will next meet Juan Martin Del Potro. Also not having lost a set is Roger Federer. The number three seed will meet Mikhail Yuzhny in round four after a straight sets victory over David Nalbandian. While world number two Novak Djokovic was stretched by Cypriot Marcos Bagdatis, but prevailed in a 6-4, 4-6, 6-3 and 6-4 victory to set up a last 16 tie with Francis Michel Laudra. The other last 16 gentlemen's draw sees Andy Murray going up against another Frenchman, Richard Gasquet, after taking nearly three hours to defeat Ivan Lubicic. Thomas Burdich will meet 10 seed and American Marty Fish, while a quartet of unseeded players make it into the last 16, where we will see Lucas Cabot from Poland, who beat Game on Fee, playing Feliciano Lopez, who dumped Andy Roddick out of the competition. And Aussie Tomic faces Xavier Malise, this after Malise defeated 11 seed Jürgen Melzer. While over at the women's draw, second seeded Vera Zvonareva, number 6 Francesca Schiavone, Svetlana Kuznetsova and Anna Ivanovic have all exited the championship. But the Williams girls, the Granting Sharapova, have all progressed, along with Caroline Wozniacki, who is still on course for that elusive first Grand Slam title. Here are the last 16 matchups in the ladies' draw. Wozniacki faces Dominika Chibulkova, while the next highest seed, Maria Sharapova, meets China's Peng Shuai, and Victoria Azarenka is up against Petra Kvitova. This next matchup should be good, and it's between the younger Williams, Serena, and Francis Marian Bartoli, while the elder Williams, Venus, plays Svetana Pironkova, who booted out second seed, Vera Zvonareva. Sabine Lisicki's fairy tale run continues and is expected to go on when she goes up against Preta Chetkovska. And the remaining tie sees another Czech Republic player, Petra Kvitova, facing Janina Wigmeyer. And unseeded Tamira Paschak of Australia plays Ksenia Pervet of Russia. The other headline making news from the weekend is Formula One. And if you're you know, one of those beginning to yawn over Sebastian Vettel's dominance, can't blame you. Some people were feeling the same way when Michael Schumacher was in that form nearly a decade ago. But what can you say about them Germans, or the German as Vettel, picked up win number 6 of the season. Here's the top 10 finishers in yesterday's European GP at Valencia. The German led from start to finish and it seems as though he didn't put a foot wrong in the 57 lap race. A good scrap between Alonso and Weber, but a superb in-lap prior to Alonso's pit stop managed to move him from third to second and saw the Spaniard splitting the Red Bull boys. The McLarens, who complained about tie performance all weekend long, couldn't do much but at least ended with some points, sandwiching the other Ferrari driver, Felipe Massa. A commendable seventh for Nico Rosberg and another top ten finish for Toro Rosso's Jaime Algeshwari, Force India's Adrian Sutil and Lotus winner's Nick Heifel. And what's interesting about this race is that for the first time Time this season, there were no DNFs as all 24 cars took the checkered flag. So to the standings, and as though we don't already know who's leading, looks like it's near impossible to catch Vettel. As long as the other fellas below him are jostling for points, it works out to the Germans' favour, even more now with that 77-point advantage. But the race to watch now will be between Button and Weber, while Hamilton has to watch his back with the ever-improving Ferrari and Fernando Alonso. And with top 10 finishes this weekend, it moves Nico Rosberg and Nick Heidfeld up in the standings. It'll be Silverstone in two weeks' time, and the use of the so-called off-throttle blowing diffusers, which help to increase downforce by blowing hot gases over the rear of the car's floor, while the driver is not pressing the accelerator, will be banned. And let's not discount the weather at Silverstone. 
end to end our episode today, let's speak at the Premier League transfer news. It's a week that more heated action is expected in player movements. But another Tottenham player has been in the news with rumours of a £20 million move for Aaron Lennon to Liverpool. The name itself seems that he was destined to head to Merseyside. Kenny Daglish has asked Liverpool's director of football, Damon Kamoli, to switch his attention from signing Stuart Downing to acquiring Lennon. Kamoli knows Lennon well as he was his first signing when Kamoli was director of football at White Hart Lane. Local news reports are indicating that Lennon would love to move back up to North London and it seems that the repeated pledges by Harry Redknapp and Daniel Levy to keep their top stars may have to be broken as Spurs will still need to sell somebody to raise the necessary funds to bring in the desperately needed strikers at White Hart Lane. But if the deal is done in the coming week, we could see Aaron Lennon joining the Reds on their Asia tour, something not many Spurs fans here will be excited about. But the Reds fans could add another song to their chanting repertoire. And just yesterday, Liverpool supporters club in Malaysia gathered to practice their team songs ahead of Liverpool's visit to Malaysia on July the 16th. And these guys are all pumped up for their visit. As tickets have been bought, banners have been made, mostly out of their own pockets, and what's left is getting the right lyrics for the right tune. We'll have their performance as a Who Has Sport special in the days ahead. And we'll also look at the other transfer news in our upcoming episodes. Until then, have a great start to your work week. I'm Patrick for the team saying it's bye for now.